This is I'm Lost Without You by Famous Last Words. Narration by Flamin' Warfer. Female parts done by a non pencil. And male parts done by Flutter Priest. Chapter 1 I'm Lost Without You. Very good then, Ambassador Spike. Do you have any further concerns before we close this negotiation? The elderly ox pushed his glasses up the bridge of his snout and looked up at the dragon across the table from him. No, I believe that covers just about all of it, Mr. Ali Ali. Spike nodded and smiled. All right, then. In exchange for a biannual shipment of apples in the contracted amount, the Ponyville and Canterlot territories will be allowed full trading rights in our land. Spike rose from his seat, extending a claw to the ox to shake his hoof. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure doing business with you, and I know the princesses will feel the same once I deliver the news. Spike, led by the oxen service guards, made his way out of the castle into the entrance hall. Thanks, gentlemen, but I can find my way out of here. Very well, Mr. Spike, one of the guards replied. We hope you enjoyed your visit to Oxenfree this week. Have an enjoyable afternoon, sir. You as well. Spike said with a wave. Spike did his best to not jump for joy in front of the guards, but he could barely contain himself. Celestia had warned him about the stubbornness of the Oxen Empire and that he'd be lucky to get a meeting, much less an actual deal done. Boy, was she going to love the letter she received later that night. Spike stepped out into the fading sunlight. The deal had taken most of the day to negotiate, so he was going to have to head back to his hotel room for the night. Spike wandered around town a bit, taking a few of the sights. Given the general length of his missions from the princesses, he was not going to be returning here for some time, if at all. However, he had one job to do. So, after an hour or so of poking around, he returned to the hotel he was staying at and retired to his room. All right, Spike, he said aloud to himself. Time to remind Celestia why you were chosen as the ambassador of Equestria. Dear Celestia, as per the usual, I've gone and exceeded your expectations again. A new deal is done, which will allow free trade and auction free for Canterlot and Ponyville in exchange for just a 10% commission on all apples and apple products twice a year. Nothing crazy. Low cost, but potentially huge gain. I have a copy of the contract. I'll bring it with me when I come back. Sincerely, Spike the Dragon. Spike rolled up the parchment and blew a burst of flame onto it, sending it on its way. As per the usual, a few minutes later, he felt a growling in the pit of his stomach and popped out a letter. All right, Celestia. Let's see what you have to say to that. Dear Spike, thank you for your, as always, quick and efficient handling of this matter. You know what? Forget all the professional jargon. After five minutes of trying to deal with these oxen and their pompous windbag of a leader, I was about ready to banish the lot of them to the moon. Actually, the moon may have been a bit too forgiving. I've heard legends of a distant planet called Earth. I've heard that the inhabitants feast upon oxen. Perhaps that would work. How you managed to convince them to turn the deal in our favor is beyond me, but I'm grateful. Anywho, I hope you enjoy the next leg of your mission. I know you love visiting the Dragonlands from time to time to catch up with Ember, but do remember, you have a job to do there. Our current treaty on the gems that border our land and theirs is coming to an end, and it is of utmost importance that you work out a new deal. I have every bit of confidence you can. I'll see you back at the castle in a month. Sincerely, Princess Celestia. Spike chuckled and tossed the letter back onto the desk in his room. Oh, Celestia, always handing off the dirty work to me. Spike grinned and shook his head before wandering over to his bed. He was very excited about his return trip to the Dragonlands, but that could wait until morning. For now, if his weighty eyelids were any indication, he needed some sleep. He crawled under his covers and laid his head down, 
eyes shut and thoughts slipping away, he drifted off into sleep. Oh, Spike, dear, you mustn't eat your food so quickly. You're going to make yourself sick. Spike gulped and rubbed the back of his neck. <laughs> Sorry, Rarity. I haven't eaten in forever, or at least it feels that way. The white mare chuckled and shook her head. Spike, we ate this morning before we went gem hunting. That was, let's see, four hours ago? Hardly what I'd consider forever. Spike paused before taking his next bite of the hay and tomato salad Rarity had made for him. What can I say? The doctor says I'm at that stage in my growth where I get hungry all the time. I mean, I've grown a whole foot in the past few months alone. Well, never mind what the doctor says. All you growing males are the same. Hungry all the time with little attention to manners. Rarity levitated an extra napkin across the table to wipe Spike's face off. I suppose I can forgive you this time, just like all the others. Spike was about to start eating again, but thought twice before digging in. Instead, he made a point to select just a few chunks of salad with his fork and chew them slowly before swallowing. Well, I guess I can at least try to act more civilized. You know, because it's so important to you and everything. If you're going to be more patient with me, I suppose the least I can do is try. Rarity smiled. Well, aren't you just the gentle Drake? Spike, what do you say? After this, we go out for dessert together at the ice cream shop. You've earned it, and I promise you can eat whatever you want. Spike nodded vigorously. That sounds great, but you have to let me pay. I've earned some money, and I suppose I have a gentle Drake standard to uphold now that I'm getting older. Deal. Rarity and Spike both shared a chuckle as they finished their meal. Rarity! Spike shot up in his bed, gasping for air. He quickly glanced around his room to get a bearing on his surroundings before laying back into his bed. Ah, oh, my head. Spike said, rubbing his temples. That was not a good night's sleep. But that was a nice dream. Spike got up gathered his things, and wandered down to the hotel lobby. Are you checking out, sir? The voice of the receptionist at the counter said. Yes, ma'am. Spike said. You have a great hotel here, by the way. Give my thanks to the staff when you can. Thank you, sir. I'll do just that. Did you enjoy your holiday weekend? The receptionist smiled politely at Spike as he turned in his room key. Holiday weekend? Spike asked. Yes, sir. This was the summer's harvest celebration weekend. I believe equestrians celebrate it every year at this time. Reality hit Spike like a two-ton bag of bricks. Oh my gosh, you're right. I got my dates mixed up with all the traveling I've been doing. I, I have to go. Spike flipped around and ran to the nearest table, bringing out his parchment and pen. Forgive me, Celestia. Dear Celestia, I have to take a pause before visiting the Dragon Kingdom. I've completely got my dates mixed up, and I have to go to Ponyville immediately. Thanks in advance for your understanding. Sincerely, Spike. Spike blew his flame and sent a letter off. It was quickly followed by a response. Dear Spike, this was Summer's Harvest, wasn't it? I completely understand. Do what you need. Let me know when you resume your mission. Love, your friend. Celestia. Spike rolled up the letter, put it in his satchel, and ran toward the train station. The sound of train horns and hot metal filled his nostrils, but he didn't have time to process any of it. He scanned the area for a brief moment before finding the ticket booth. He darted there as fast as he could. Hello there, sir. How may I help you? The ticket sales clerk smiled at Spike as he approached the desk. You seem to be in a hurry. Late for work somewhere, I presume? Much more important than that. I need a ticket back to Equestria. What's the closest I can get to Ponyville? The clerk scanned over the departure schedule. Well, we have a train that ends up at Ponyville itself, but it's a few days worth of travel with two layovers. Conductor's got to sleep, too. I'll take it. That's fine. The conductor took Spike's bits and handed him a ticket. 
Well, I don't know what's in Ponyville that's so urgent, but I wish you luck with whatever it is, sir. Enjoy your trip. Spike nodded before running off towards the designated train. He handed his ticket to the conductor and found a seat. He slouched back and closed his eyes. He felt so stupid, but there was no time to feel sorry for himself. He had only one thought on his mind. Rarity, I'm so sorry I forgot. I'll be there in a few days, I promise. I'm on my way. Ow! Spike cried out, rubbing his head. I keep forgetting to duck when I walk into your boutique. I come over here enough you'd think I remember. I'm so sorry, dear, Rarity said, rushing over to him. I've honestly been thinking about getting the door frame raised a few inches to help. Don't worry about it, Spike said, knocking his fist on his head a few times. Tough scales. But in good news, I apparently won't be growing much anymore. At least not for a long while. I'm destined to be a five-foot wall of handsomeness for as long as you know me, I guess. Rarity chuckled. Now, Spike, remember what we talked about last week. Just because you've grown doesn't mean your ego needs to grow with it. Yes, ma'am. Spike said with a grin. But on to important matters. I brought you something. Rarity gasped. A present? For me? Spike nodded and pulled a small black box tied up with a silver ribbon from behind his back. Here you go, Rarity. I hope you like it. Rarity tried to hide her giddiness but failed immensely. She tore open the box and gasped at what she saw inside. Spike! These can't be! <laughs> yep, they are, he said. Read them for yourself if you don't believe me. Rarity pulled out one of the two small slips of paper inside. This ticket is good for a week's stay at Pony Mona Beach Resort and Spa. All meals and expenses paid. Spike, you didn't. You, you couldn't. How? Well, let's just say ever since I've been helping out Celestia and Twilight in a more official manner, I made some very influential friends. Spike chuckled and gave up a toothy grin. Do you like it? Rarity reared up and jumped onto Spike, enveloping him in, in as tight of a hug as she could, given her smaller size. Spike, this is amazing. But why? I haven't done anything for you. Rarity, you've done a lot for me. Spike gently released the hug and set her back to her hooves. You're my best friend, and that means everything. But on top of that, I know you've been lonely recently. Especially ever since Sweetie left for college and Twilight has pretty much locked herself up in the castle. I thought you might like a vacation. Rarity smiled. But Spike, there are two tickets in here. Well, he said, his face starting to burn. I was hoping that, well, maybe I could come with you. I have next week off, and I really couldn't think of anyone else I'd like to spend a vacation with. That is, if you want to. Rarity gently brushed her mane out of her eyes and dropped her gaze to the floor. Oh, um, Spike, I... It, it's okay, Rarity. I, I understand. You can use that ticket on who have... I'd love to. Er, you want to, but... Wait, What? I'd love to, Spike. Rarity pulled her eyes up to meet his. Over the years, you've shown yourself to be nothing, if not a gentle cult, er, uh, Drake. And honestly, there's no pony in Ponyville I feel closer to. Maybe, maybe it's time we start spending more time together. Well, we see each other every week, but, you know, maybe we should spend our time together a bit differently. Oh, I'm probably making no sense. I just... Spike hushed her with a single claw over her lip. I know exactly what you mean. So, is it a date? Rarity blushed and nodded. Yes, Spike. Of course it is. I can't wait. Spike's eyes shot open as the train hit a bump, popping him out of his seat for a moment. He looked out the window at the countryside rolling by, the grass blades blowing back and forth, seemingly in rhythm with a steady hum of the train. She loves train rides, 
Spike shook his head, ending any negative thoughts before they began. He was just going to be a day late, two at the most. Nothing to beat himself up over. He'd be back in Ponyville in less than two days now. Spike got up and felt his stomach gurgling. He stretched out and emitted a yawn. A few other passengers on the train squinted their eyes in annoyance at being woken up, but Spike didn't care. He was ready to start his day. Spike walked down the aisle until he came across a stewardess in the back. Excuse me, miss, he said, approaching her. Yes, sir. How may I help you? She replied with a plastered on smile. Which way is the food car? I could use some breakfast. Of course, sir. Just head through the doors over there and continue to the next car after that. You can't miss it. Spike nodded. Thank you, ma'am. He looked at the doors directly in front of him, then glanced back at the doors on the side of the car. The south doors, right? These doors right here, sir. The stewardess replied, pointing at the set right in front of him. Oh, yeah, of course. Spike said, his face turning red. Thanks for your help again. Any time, sir. Spike thought he caught her rolling her eyes on the last comment, but he would be doing the same thing under the circumstances. Dealing with half-asleep passengers wasn't quite the ideal job. Spike rubbed his eyes to try and get the sleep out and made his way to the food car. It was already fairly lively, with like-minded creatures of all species sitting around enjoying breakfast. Spike took in the scent and felt his stomach about to implode from hunger. He walked to the car and found a seat at the bar where the hostess was at. He slugged his way off his feet and into the chair. The hostess, a younger male with gray fur and a white mane, made a way over to him. Good morning, love. My name's Platinum. Platinum Ladle. But only call me that if you're my boss and my grandmother, you hear? Spike grinned. Yes, ma'am. Or Platinum, I guess. Very good, then. She said with a grin. What'll it be to get you started? A coffee, please. He replied, doing his best to sit up straight. Couple creams on the side. And do you have any biscuits and potato gravy, by any chance? Of course we do. She replied. Finest kitchen a train has ever seen. We've got anything you could think of. Thanks. That's exactly what I'll have then. Of course. She disappeared to the back with an order slip for a moment before returning a second later with a large mug of coffee, steam rolling off the top and into the air. Will four creams be enough for you? She asked, setting down the cup. Spike nodded. Huh? Oh, yeah, that'll be just fine. Thanks. Platinum nodded and began to walk away. However, she turned around and walked up to Spike once more. What's your name, love? Spike looked up from his coffee he was stirring around. Me? My name's Spike. We don't see many dragons coming and going around here. Your kind seems to like to keep to themselves most of the time. Or you just fly where you need to go. Yeah, we're not generally considered the friendliest bunch, Spike said. But, as you can see, I don't have wings. So it's conventional travel for me if I need to go anywhere. Where are you headed to? She asked propping her head into her hooves on the counter. Ponyville. I have a very important appointment there to keep. Platinum nodded. Really? My grandmother's from there. Uh, hold on a second. That's it. I knew I recognized you from somewhere. You're that dragon that works with Princess Twilight over yonder, right? Princess Celestia, too. That's me, Ambassador Spike. Spike grinned and took a sip of his coffee. Not the most glamorous title. I don't keep up too much with politics and all that, but I hear talk even open up trade negotiations all over regions. Seems like a pretty glamorous job to me. <sighs> well, I'm just doing what I can to help, one step at a time. Spike took another sip and wiped his lips. This coffee is great. Thank you. She nodded. House recipe. Now, tell me what's eating you. I've only worked on this train for a few seasons, but I know enough to know when somebody's not spilling the beans. So spill it. You got an angry wife waiting for you back home, or maybe you're trying to get away from her? Spike shrugged. I guess you could say that. I was supposed to be back in Ponyville to visit her last night. Got my dates and times mixed up. That happens more often than you'd think when you've been around like I have. Now I'm a day late, and... 
Well, she always been one to focus on the small details. Let's just say I'm going to have a lot of apologizing to do. Platinum let out a hearty laugh. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to be around for that conversation. But tell me, you seem like a seasoned soul. Do you love her? She loves you? Spike looked up to meet her eyes. Yeah, more than anything. Then she'll forgive you, trust me. Spike dropped his head onto his claw. I hope so. You don't know her like I do. <laughs> you could live a thousand more years and you'll never fully understand a female. If you two love each other, she'll forgive you and be waiting with open hooves for you. Or arms. Not quite sure what species you're talking about. But at the end, we're all the same. She's a pony. Spike muttered, lifting his head up. Her name is Rarity. Rarity? I see. Well, like I said, no matter the circumstance, she loves you just as much. Thank you, Platinum. I appreciate it. Order up! A loud voice rang out from the kitchen along with the dinging of a bell. Well, I suppose that's enough of this serious talk for one morning. Platinum said, retrieving the plate of food from the kitchen window behind them. Some biscuits and gravy will do the trick, I'm sure. Spike perked up at the sight of his food and licked his lips. I can't argue with you there. Enjoy it, Spike. Platinum smiled, giving him a quick wink and moved down the counter to attend to another customer. Spike turned his gaze back to his food and muttered to himself. Thank you, Platinum. I'll let your grandmother know that you're doing well. Oh my gosh! Twilight jumped up and down around Spike. It's the big day! Spike, are you ready? Yes, Twilight. Spike replied, rolling his eyes. I've been ready for three hours, and yes, we triple-checked the checklist. Twilight stood on her hind legs and adjusted the bow tie Spike was wearing. Oh, I know that, Spike. I'm just, oh, I'm so excited for you. Thanks, Twilight. It means a lot that you took the time out to come. I really appreciate it. Of course, Spike. Of course. Twilight said, wrapping him in a big hug. You're like my younger brother. I wouldn't have missed this for anything. Their hug was interrupted by the sound of the dressing room door opening. Twilight. If you wouldn't mind, you may want to go and wait with Sweetie Belle in the other dressing room. I believe she had a ribbon out of place. Twilight's jaw hit the floor. Thank you so much, Celestia. I'm on it. Twilight planted a quick kiss on Spike's cheek and dashed out of the room. Thanks, Celestia. Spike said with a grin. I owe you one. The princess nodded and laughed. Anytime, Spike. So, how do you feel? Are you ready for the big moment? If you're asking if I have cold claws, no. If you're asking if I'm about to pass out, then, oh, yeah. Spike straightened his tie for the umpteenth time and cleared his throat. Do you think I'm ready? Spike, you look amazing. Celestia said, scanning him over. Trust me, Rarity will have a hard time waiting till after the wedding to bring you home. Spike's face heated up. Come on, Celestia. You're going to make me lose my focus. Besides, what I mean is, do you think I'm ready for marriage in general? Do you think I can handle the responsibility? I'm so scared. What if I'm not good enough? Celestia laughed. Spike, you have nothing to worry about. You are more than good enough. Just between you and I, every mayor in my kingdom had their eye on you. Lucky for rarity... You only had eyes for her, your whole life. If that doesn't prove you two are right for each other, I don't know what does. Spike took a deep breath. But maybe I didn't think this through enough. What's going to happen in the future when... Shh, Spike. Celestia said. Listen to me. Do you love her? Yes or no? Yes. Then that's all you need to concern yourself with. Right here, right now, there's a mare that loves you more than anything, and she's all you need to think about today. Understand? Spike nodded. Then go out there and show her how much you love her. Go. Spike nodded and moved towards the door. Wait, 
He ran back and wrapped his arms around Celestia, gripping her in a tight embrace. Thanks for everything over the years. I wouldn't be here today without you and Twilight. Spike let go and went to the main hall. The wedding was being held at the Canterlot Palace Wedding Chapel. Hundreds of ponies, dragons, and many other species lined the chairs of the, from the front to back. Spike had the opportunity to look at them all as he waited on the stage. However, when Rarity came down the aisle, everything else in the room disappeared. All he could see was the beautiful mare walking towards him. It's true, time had passed and they both gotten older but she was even more beautiful than he could have possibly imagined. As far as he was concerned, she always would be. Rarity. He muttered under his breath. Against his better judgment, he could feel, feel a few tears drip from his eyes. He'd never been so happy in his life, and his eyes were showing it. As she took the stage and Celestia read out her traditional marriage speech, Spike and Rarity kept their eyes locked on each other the whole time. Nothing else existed. Nothing else mattered. Just the two of them. Now, Spike the Dragon, do you take Rarity to be your lawfully wedded wife and to love her and have her for as long as you both shall live? Celestia looked down from her podium at Spike. Absolutely. Spike brought his claw to his face. I'm sorry. I mean, I do. Forever. I do. And Rarity... Do you take Spike to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live? Yes, I do. Forever. Celestia nodded. Then with the power invested in me, I pronounce you both husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Spike gently took Rarity's head in his palm and brushed her mane out of her face. Rarity, I love you. I love you too, Spike. Without another word, Spike leaned in and planted his lips on hers. He could feel his body float as all the applause and cheers from the audience melted away into nothingness. It was just a moment, but it truly lasted forever. A loud, blaring horn caused Spike to fall out of the makeshift bed he made up in the train seat. We've now arrived at Ponyville. Repeat, if your destination was Ponyville... Depart the train now. Spike rubbed the sleep out of his eyes and got up. He grabbed his bag he was using as a pillow and exited the train. He stretched out his limbs and took a quick look around the train station. Same wooden plank loading station, same old ticket and stand, save for a new coat of paint. Some things never change. Spike took a deep breath, the familiar smells coming back to him. His hometown where he spent the better part of his life until now. It was as if he never left every time he came back, because it always felt like he was returning home, no matter the distance nor the time that he was gone. Spike slowly started his way down the beaten, rocky path that led into town. I'm home, Rarity. He said out loud. I'm finally home. Spike walked as fast as he could towards the town. He could already see the castle in the distance. He could already smell the sweet scent of apple pies and fresh fritters. Some things never got old. When he finally made it into town, it was as if nothing had changed from all the years he'd lived there. The population had increased a bit, but the same old streets were filled with ponies going about their business. Members of the Apple family were in their squares selling their products. Phillies and Colts were walking around town on their way to school. The Capitol building was bustling and alive as it always was. Of course, there were some changes. A fresh layer of rock and pavement lined the busiest streets. The Carousel Boutique, of course, was sold many years before. After the wedding, Spike and Rarity sold off the original business to the town and decided on operating just the location in Canterlot so there'd be more time for the two of them. It was a library now. One that saw much use for many of the town's residents. And, of course, a lot of the faces had changed. Older generations were placed with their children and grandchildren. No matter the changes, Spike loved coming home whenever he could. But there was no time to dance around. He had a mission, and that 
of course, was to come up with the apology of the century for his wife. She would understand that business takes him away longer than he wishes, but at the same time, she always deserved the best. And one day late wasn't his best. Spike immediately made his way from the square over to the flower stand. Considering it was summer, the stand was practically aglow with all the flowers they had available. Excuse me, Spike said, addressing the pony in charge. Hello. Spike? A pink pony with a blue mane grew a bright smile at seeing him. Spike, it's so great to see you. Hello, Rosemary. It's been too long. Spike reached out and gave her a quick hug. It has been, but we all understand. Equestria never sleeps, so neither do you. Are you here to visit Twilight? I think she's out for the week. No, I need to see Rarity. And considering I'm late, I need the nicest bouquet of flowers you have. Spike grinned and let out a sigh. Nothing but the best will do. Oh, yes, of course, Spike. Rosemary looked around the cart and pulled out a lovely bunch of white and red roses. These ought to do nicely. Freshly picked. Half red, half white. So you get the I love you factor along with something a little softer. Perfect. Spike said, taking the bouquet. How much do I owe you? Oh, nothing. Rosemary replied, shaking her hoof. Considering how important the reason is, it's the least I can do. And don't bother trying. I'm not accepting any bits from you. Spike was about to persist, but instead nodded his head. Thank you, Rosemary. I owe you one. Spike took the flowers and left. It wasn't going to be easy, but he had to do what he had to do. Luckily, he practiced his speech on the ride home. He was going to need it. Spike went over his lines over and over again in his mind. But every time he opened his mouth, nothing right came out. He'd been with her for a minute now and hadn't said a single coherent thing. Rarity, please. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Please forgive me. Spike looked up at the sky, trying to clear his mind. I didn't mean to be late. I tried my hardest, I promise. But I... I just didn't try hard enough this year. So, um... I tried to make it up to you. He took the flowers from the bouquet, wrapping, and held them out. You see, Rarity? I brought you these flowers. You always loved roses. So I thought, maybe... Just maybe you'd have an easier time forgiving me. Spike knelt into the grass and set the flowers on the ground in front of him. Rarity, I'm so sorry. I promise. I meant it when I said I loved you. I know I don't have a place saying that right now, but it's true. It was true for every day. Every day of the 40 years we were together. And it's been true every day of the f last five years since. I love you. Forever. Spike placed the flowers next to the tombstone in front of him and leaned against it. Tears flowed from his eyes, dripping onto the marble surface. I promise I'll never be late again. This has been a narration of I'm Lost Without You by Famous Last Words. Narration by Flammenwerfer. Female parts by a non-pencil. And male parts by Flutter Priest. And congratulations to Famous Last Words for winning the Barcast's Make Spike Suffer competition.